Welcome traders to this live webinar with Admo Markets. My name is Chris Nenet and I together are going to take a look at exotic candlestick patterns. So with that we mean not like the typical uh, engulfing twin for instance, which is something we've discussed already in, in other webinars regarding candlesticks, but more exotic, more unknown uh, and different types of candles. So before we dive into today's topic, please be aware of these two disclaimers. First of all, this webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. <clears throat> also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Thank you so much for your attention. So, Nenet and I are excited that you are here. This is, of course, our uh, Thursday evening educational webinar. And uh, for more webinars, you can always turn to AdmiralMarkets.com, click on Education, and then on Webinars. So, today, uh, first of all, I'm going to share you know, what I wanted to uh, basically talk about, uh, the candles, uh, formations that I see that are interesting and important. Then Nenet is going to take over and he's going to share his uh, view on the market. When looking at candles, basically, I see, in a way, building blocks, uh, building blocks that make part of a larger structure uh, in the market. So one single candle candle is a unit, is, a, is the most basic unit. That could be a bar too, of course, by the way, it doesn't matter. And uh, this is basically the smallest kind of segment unit that we have. When we start to connect those candlesticks, we get candlestick patterns, right? If we're looking at sometimes one, two, three, uh, it could be a bullish reversal pattern, it could be a continuation pattern, it could be bearish uh, pattern, continuation or reversal. Other, of course, than that, you have candles making up swings, swing high, swing lows, that could be with momentum or corrective. So if we look at this particular uh, chart, all right, we can see that, for instance, here we see a bullish pin bar. That's one candlestick. Uh, here we can see engulfing, bearish engulfing twins. Those are two candlesticks. But between those two patterns, there is a swing, a swing high, swing low, or swing low, swing high, right? There's a bottom here and a top here. That particular piece of price action uh, is one that shows momentum. It consists of about, I think it's about 10 candles, right? Most of those candles are bullish, and we can say that that swing is bullish. So we have, when we look and dissect this piece of the chart, we have, first of all, here, bullish candlestick pattern. We have a swing high that is bullish, momentum, and then we bump into a bearish candlestick pattern. So just by looking at um, you know, a sequence of about 15 candles, we see two patterns and we understand uh, that in between there was a swing that had bullish momentum. So all of these candles, uh, sorry, all of these concepts help us understand what's going on on the charts and understand what's going uh, what's happening right now with, with price. Then if we take the next step and we start to analyze various swings, we can see chart patterns. When we look at, for instance, this, we see a correction like that. This is called a bull flag, right? We see momentum prior to it, momentum, correction, chart pattern, bull flag, continuation. Again, a bull flag, continuation. So uh, this is very classical, in a way, uh, technical analysis. And uh, this is very classical charting analysis, charting skills, charting, um, the, and, and, yeah, charting uh, the market, basically, right? So now we could, of course, dissect the, this whole chart like this. We see various swings, various candlestick patterns. But this is just to give you an introduction of 
things that I and, and then that use often when looking at the market. Now, what I wanted to focus on today, this was just a, a, basically a bit of a background into uh, how we look at patterns, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, right? But what I wanted to focus on was what I call time factor patterns. You might wonder what has what, what that has to do with candlesticks. Why is it a candlestick pattern? So, well, basically, before I can answer that, I need to explain to you what time factor pattern is, and then we can move on to that. So, first of all, I need to explain what momentum is. Momentum is basically a, a series of candles pushing in one direction, up or down. And the majority of those candles will be uh, bearish or bullish, those candles will have mostly closes near the low, and those majority, those uh, bullish, sorry, those candles with momentum will be quite large. So we see here large candles, right? We see majority of those candles being bearish within this piece, and we see the closes near the low, right? So this is the characteristic of a momentum. Here too, we see Big candles to the downside, majority of the candles are bearish, and many of these bearish candles have closes near the low. So that is how we can define momentum. Correction would be basically choppy price action like this, closes uh, not so near to the high or low, scrambled. The time frame, basically this is a concept, this is a, a fractal concept. What that means is that it's a repetitive formation on all time scales. Fractal is basically something that repeats on no matter what time frame or time scale we look at. So you will see momentum on really all time frames. Now, what time frame do you want to use it for to trade? That's a different question. Uh, I don't, although, I, although there is momentum, visible on the one minute chart, I don't trade it on the one minute chart, right? So those are two different things, but you will see it. Um, so that's momentum. The fractal is critical because it explains when price is pausing. When candles keep pushing, you will have a candle high and also lows, like to the upside here, that make a higher high and higher low. What is the definition of a trend, right? Higher highs, higher lows. We can do the same concept for the candle itself. Normally we look, of course, at trends, we look at large swing swings. We say, okay, this is a top, this is a top, this is a top, it's a downtrend, right? That's fine, it's a great downtrend channel. But in fact, when looking at this channel, within that channel, there are multiple pieces of swings. This is one, that's momentum. This is two, it's corrective. This is a third, that's momentum. This is a fourth, this is a correction. So, you know, this channel has already here, we can see actually five pieces, right? Five. <clears throat> when looking at momentum, we don't look at such a large swing high, swing lows, but we look at the candles in themselves to show whether there's a push or not. Here you see candle lows keep pushing for a new lower low. The fractal appears when that doesn't happen for two candles in a row. If you add the fractal from your MT4 station, go to insert, go to indicators, go to Bill Williams, in, insert indicators, Bill Williams, and add fractals, and the standard number is two. What does that mean? You have two bearish candles like this, one bearish candle like that, and two bearish candles like this, you will have a fractal below the middle candle. What it means is that at minimum, two candles to the left and two candles to the right have to be higher than the lowest candle. Or for a resistance fractal, we need one candle to be higher than two to the left, and two candles to the right. So we're talking about the high being higher, right? The highest of a group of five candles at minimum. It could be more, it could be as many as you can imagine. That doesn't matter. 
There's only a minimum that's important. If they're less, if they're less, if there's only one to the left or one to the right, it's not the fractal. It will not appear. Uh, it's not a valid fractal. Okay, so it, it's not good uh, as a fractal. So to the left, to the right, fractal. And it, for bearish, it would be like this. It doesn't matter. The sequence doesn't matter. If, if, for instance, this one is lower, this one is higher, as long as this one has the lowest and it's lower than two to the left, two to the right. Is, is that clear? So that's fractal. So fractals will appear, obviously, when at least two candles have not posted a, low, a, a, a higher high or lower low. What does that mean? That means that the momentum is temporarily weakening. Now, the fractal of two was chosen by Bill Williams when testing the commodities market on a daily chart. Back, I guess, some 30 years ago is my rough guess. Maybe someone here in the audience uh, knows the date, the exact date. If you do, let, let us let us know. It'll be interesting. But I would guess something like that. Nothing wrong with that. But in my testing, I've noticed that for the forex market specifically, and also specifically for charts lower than the daily chart, although I think even for daily, weekly, monthly charts, a time factor of a different value is better. So I made my own custom-made fract uh, fractal in a way, which I call time factor pattern. This is five to six candles. And what it says is two candles is interesting if we get a pause, if we get candles like this, right, upside, and two candles are not able to break for a higher high. That's interesting, but it could be just a temporary pause. Only after five to six candles, one, two, three, four, five, do not break this high, that's when the swing high, swing low is actually finished. So let's take a look at like this example here. That's better. Top, bottom. We can see that now. It's visible to us now, right, easily. How do we know that at that particular time? When we look at the charts here, how do we know that? It's going to be ending. Well, of course, we can use support and resistance. Those could be clues. But at that point, we really don't know. If, if of course, there could be some fib targets, etc. When, from a time factor pattern, we do know is when five to six candles do not break this bottom. So at this point, somewhere in here is five to six candles. That's when we know that this swing high, swing low is finished. Now, I have to add that you might wonder about this. There's some pause there, right? So we can, we can count it, one, two, three, four, five, six. So technically speaking, this is a swing high, swing low. This is a correction. And this is a next swing high, swing low. Because here, there are more than five to six candles. That's how I would look at it. Just because five to six candles appear that don't break a high, or low doesn't mean that the momentum or trend is necessarily over what it does mean is that there's a good chance for a retracement like here or a reversal okay look at here for instance five to six candles and we get a bigger retracement so it's like a higher chance and a warning Depending on the overall structure, the market structure, I would then assess whether a correction or a reversal is more likely. These fractals show symbols, rounds, uh, a circle, a diamond, and colors. I'm going to explain that uh, in, in later on. But for the moment, you just need to know that all of these symbols represent fractals. Five to six candles uh, to the left, yes. Five to, five to six to the left. Uh, well, look, uh, basically, uh, five to six 
to the left to two here, as you can see. So two to the left, five to six to the right. And you will have, what I should uh, explain is that uh, the custom made indicator here, fractal indicator, will still show the classical fractals, two and two, two to the left and two to the right. And um, it will still show those. Okay, so it's not gonna, it, it will still show the classical ones. And it will show the ones that are after five to six. It does that through this color coding. And that's what I wanted to explain actually uh, in the next slides. Uh, but that's fine, that's no problem. So depending on the color codes, you will see basically fractals that appear from two to six candles, from six to 13, and from 13 plus. So there's a differential there. But I'm only talking about to the right of the candles. Uh, on the left, it doesn't matter. All right. For my testing, uh, this time factor pattern, um, now I call it, a, you know, this is, you know, you can debate whether this is a candlestick pattern or not. Um, I decided to use it because we are counting candles. So, I mean, I called it time factor pattern back in the day, but really it's not, I mean, that's the name I chose, but it is counting candles. So, you know, it's, it's from that perspective, it is more of a candle stick pattern in a way as well. They're, it's a mixture. Now, the next thing I wanted to explain was what to do with it, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can take a look at your dollar, definitely, uh, one hour chart. Uh, let me just explain this, this part still. Time factor versus moving average. What I wanted to basically explain is that what I use these fractals is in relationship to the moving average. Basically, these fractals show the relationship towards the moving averages, the short and the long term. Uh, a 21 and a 144 EMA. On the chart is an 8 EMA though, but the fractals symbolize their relationship towards the trend. So that's the coloring part. So the color show, the red fractals show a downtrend, the green fractals would show an uptrend. Diamonds, we're talking about these here, 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 here. The cool thing is that these fractals indicate that support is being built basically in a downtrend. And the red fractal is indicating a downtrend, but it's also showing that there's a temporary pause within that downtrend because there is a fractal visible. So these red fractals indicate two things. One, downtrend or down momentum, bearish momentum. Two, there's a pause at the moment. Why? Because if there's no fractal, we would just see continuous push and bearish momentum. So that leads basically, and that's something I'll discuss in the next slide, to potential setups. Breakouts to the downside within that trend, for instance. All right? But these fractals are all automated, and that goes automatically. You also have circles. Circles indicate basically that those are hard resistances within this downtrend. When the circles are on top, that's tough resistance. When the circles are at the bottom, that's tough support. So it indicates the diamonds are actually indicating breakouts. The circles indicate stop. This is a, a level that is going to be tough to break. And you can see that all these fractals here on top are not broken until we get a bigger correction right here. All right, so those have the opposite. They are stronger, let's say. All right, so what can you finally do with this uh, info? Um, now, basically, I want to say that 
when trading with a trend, of course, it's always important to look and be aware of divergence, be aware of supportive resistance, especially if you're trading discretionary, because the trend can, can last long, but it is going to bend, and uh, the, the trend is your friend until it bends, so that's something you want to be aware of. Until that spot, though, until that moment, uh, the trend could be great for, for trades, right? So here, when we look at this particular screenshot and take a look at this particular up move here, you see that price, the moving average crosses. So here, you got price above the moving averages. Uh, and we see that if you break above the fractals and break above this trend line, you could draw that, you would see that there's a potential for a breakout trade. Right, so that's one way of using it. Looking for breakout trades uh, above these green or below these red fractals. Now you want to do it at a spot where um, your your larger analysis shows that there's potential for such a breakout and momentum to occur. So that's a different question. Unfortunately, uh, we can't we can't dive into that. That we had already webinars on discretionary. And trend and stuff like that but I use a tool and I talked about this recently by coincidence as well Fibonacci sequence levels and typically you get more momentum after the third level for instance so this is where you can expect more momentum to occur between the third and the fourth and the fourth and the fifth so looking for uh, continuations there makes sense from that point of view all right that's one way uh, the other way would be to look for a circle, in fact, and wait for that circle not to get broken. So we see a circle here, that's tough support, as we said. And if six to seven candles do not break this bottom, that's another way of trading a bounce to the upside. Instead of taking the breakout, take the bounce. I know the screenshot is small, so I'm gonna to go to live charts very soon. And uh, let's see. I'm missing one. We talked about the breaking the diamonds. We talked about the bounce at the circles. Ah, yes. Okay, I need to look at the live charts for the reversal at the circles. Let's, let's go. There we go. All right, so with reversal on the circles, I mean, even the circles have different colors, in fact. Now, the red diamonds, these dark red diamonds, indicate uh, basically a downtrend. If there's an orange diamond, it's a bit of a warning signal, uh, let's see, or light green diamond here. It's basically saying that it could be a bigger retracement or reversal going on. So dark green is still stronger down uptrend, right? And light green is a bit of a warning. You see already the light greens at, at spots where we do get some correction. You see that? The same holds true for dark red and light red and orange. So dark is tr very strong trending. Now the same holds true for these circles. The lighter, uh, basically, uh, the, the more the trend is strong. The darker, the more that there's a range or trend or um, correction going on. So here we see some dark circles. And basically, when the dark circles appear around the 144, it is at an important decision spot, reversal or continuation. Here are some examples. Let me show you a few other examples. Here, you see dark circles at the long-term moving average. In this case, it still had a continuation to the upside. Right? Here, two dark circles, still a continuation up the upside. Um, I'm looking for a reversal. Here, here we have dark circles. Price was below the 144, dark circles, but then there was a reversal. So there are three ways to tackle it. One is break out of the green diamonds. Two is wait for circles to appear and take the bounce trade. Three is look for break or bounces at the 144 and the dark circles. I think it's going to be a bit I don't think I have time enough to explain all three uh, in detail, unfortunately. But to give you an idea uh, about at least, the, I mean, the break of the diamonds, I think, is clear. I hope just be aware 
that you do it on the time frame of your entry chart. If you're analyzing the market on the hourly chart, it's probably not that great to take the breakouts of the hourly fractal. It's probably better to take the, the breakout on the 30 minute or 15. If you're analyzing on a four hour chart, then look at the hourly. Uh, the fractal, the breakout of the fractal should be not done under the anal analysis time frame uh, because then you're basically, um, it's, it's not that great because it's a breakout. It's a breakout, so that means that you know you 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 would be running into it's not optimal. But if if you use the one hour time frame lower, then typically you'll have more space. You can also look for a break uh, with a good candlestick pattern, right? A good candle close above this fractal indicates that it's not a false break. Breakouts are always a bit risky, of course, a false break. So that's something by lowering the time frame, looking for good candles breaking above the fractals, that helps. Bounces is different. Bounces is basically here, for instance. Here you see that we're in uptrend, price is above the moving average. We're getting lower lows though, sorry, lower highs, excuse me. And uh, at this point, we're moving back to the moving average. So here we see dark fractals, right? So we're looking, if you have a bounce or reversal. The reversal will happen if you break below the dark fractals. A bounce happens when you get basically the first break above the green or you can actually take the bounce as well. One, two, three, four, or somewhere here, five to six candles, not breaking these bottoms. That would also be a possibility to trade the bullish bounce off of the dark fractals. The last uh, one I wanted to show you is not a bounce off the dark fractals, but normal fractals. For instance, uh, let's see here, orange fractal, light fractal, one, two, three, four, five, six candles, now breaking this low, and uh, that would be a bounce. There's also a break, but anyhow, that's a bounce off of this. We have an uptrend, as you can see, dark green fractals. We have tough support here, and the sixth candle is the potential entry there. Here too, I don't take entries on the analysis chart. So if I'm analyzing on the daily, you know, the four hour makes sense. If I'm analyzing the four hour, then I would look at the hourly or 30 minutes even. All right. Uh, hourly chart. I was asked about the hourly chart. Uh, you can see that prices at the Keltner resistance, Doji. Uh, from my perspective, uh, it is, uh, well, it is, there's some divergence. This is not a good spot, spot to buy, in my opinion. Uh, we see an uptrend, certainly. Moving averages in line, price above it, green fractals, definitely. Uh, we see a support fractal here. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth candle. So, you know, from this perspective, uh, we could be looking for an uptrend continuation. But from my perspective, if I do the analysis, I think that this is not a good time frame to, to look for uptrend. It is at resistance. It is showing uh, basically more of a choppy upside, a rising wedge potential here. So I think that, if anything, uh, there's a chance for price to make a retracement here, back maybe to test S1, S2, for instance, right? It's not a great spot. I think personally the euro dollar is not a great spot and I think it, uh, it's not particularly interesting to trade at this point. Uh, at this point, interesting trades would have been, for instance, to look for a break here, for instance, a break of those dark fractals I talked about. For instance, that could have been a reversal trade like this, for instance. That could have been one way of trading it. All right, so, uh, or if, uh, I don't know, uh, here we see a dark fractal, so we see here five to six candles not breaking this bottom. So if we're analyzing on this chart, then we can zoom to the 50-minute chart and take a look at how it looked like at that point. All right, and you can see we're in an uptrend here, 
So there could have been ways using these support fractals or the breakouts to take some pips to the upside on this entry chart. So this is how you can use different, uh, at least two time frames, uh, sometimes three, depending on uh, your preference, really. It doesn't really matter um, to tackle uh, the market. So to sum up, uh, let me explain. Fractals indicate pauses within the momentum, indicating that the momentum is running out of steam. It will show whether that momentum is back, whether it's going to retrace, and what the position is versus the trend. Is it basically in a strong uptrend or is there a range like here, for instance? Uh, so these fractals, they help basically that uh, understand that information a lot faster. Is price, for instance, here uh, in an uptrend like this, right? We'll see fractals here and here indicating that. Uh, I am also going to build a, a, a an expert advisor that will basically take some some of uh, the trades automatically uh, based on these fractals, and I'm going to back test that as well. So that's interesting. That's that's I'm going to have those results pretty soon, um, and it's based on bounces, not on breakouts. Here you can see though, but visually speaking, you can see. Trend, for instance, here very strongly isn't a downtrend. So then it's easy to move down to a, an hourly chart and look for, for instance, uh, continuations here as it breaks out like this, uh, below this fractal, or for bounces based on the resistance fractals. Those are the main things. And you know when basically price is at a major decision level, when you see the price is at the long-term moving average and these circle fractals. All right. so. Those are the three uh, main ideas. If you're interested in a fractal indicator, you could write me an email uh, and I'll send it to you, uh, of course, for free, no problem. Uh, just send an email with uh, which indicator you're interested in. Uh, that could be, if you like, the Fibonacci sequence levels, that's a script, or if you're interested in these fractals, the fractal indicator. Just write in the email quickly which one or which both, that's fine. The moving average, too, if you like, no problem. It's a special moving average that changes color depending on the direction. All right? So if you're looking at the recording, just later on, just pause it so you can write that down uh, if you want. And uh, I'm going to pass it over to Nenit. Hi, Nenit. Hi, Chris. Thank you for a great presentation. So we continue with uh, our uh, exotic and uh, less exotic candlesticks. Well, today we will definitely talk about uh, those uh, more uh, exotic chart patterns uh, that, are, that don't appear very, very often, but that uh, can be very useful to look at and trade. For example, uh, I will show you order blocks uh, because a lot of people uh, were asking me about order blocks and I, I actually uh, promised that I would do in near future so order blocks T89 true momentum bar and stop grabber so those are actually some uh, less known but exotic patterns that might appear uh, on your chart but also they're very very good to trade so I advise you to take a look at it and uh, well uh, I think that uh, you might be enjoying it really so first, uh, let's start with order block. Uh, well, what is an order block, guys? Uh, basic definition of an order block, uh, that is a basic definition now. Uh, says that a bullish order block is uh, the height of the bearish candle prior to move up. Uh, bearish order block is the, by basic definition, is the low of bullish candle, the candle uh, prior to move down. Uh, I have uh, let's say uh, pre-formulated uh, the main definition and according to my definition bullish order block is simply the height of the most prominent candle before the move up and bearish order block is the low of the most prominent candle before a move down. For the most prominent candle you need to look to the left of your chart. 
So this is a bullish order block. See here, guys. This is, let's say, now moment. Okay, price goes up. Usually, it will come and retest order block before it goes down, up again. Same here. Order block, watch this. This is the candle that is most prominent here. The price goes up. When it comes back to retest it, it, it usually retests order block. Watch this. Price went down, profit taking. Price went down again. And in now moment, it will come back and retest order block. OK, so this is order block. This is order block. When price is going up, until this point, this was bullish order block here. Then price goes down. From this point, this is order block, this is order block. If price went down again, this is order block. Okay, so you see it's it's a bit like, like swings. Some people call it swing high, swing lows. Well, actually it's the mix of the basic definition of an order block and uh, basic definition of price action swings. So I have noticed during my trading career that these order blocks have been very, very respected in, to, to a great extent. So that is why I personally think that uh, order blocks are simply a great confluence for determining the POC zone price of or so-called point of confluence. You will always see in my charts and in my daily analysis and of course uh, there is my primary tool where the price might go to analyze where the price might reject to find that so-called POC, so famous POC zone. But because, because we don't know whether the price will test the order block or simply something else, we need to find the order block in the confluence. But for all of you guys who are new to this, let's say that even just, just as the order block itself, it's simply strong enough to initially reject the price most of the time. So you see here, guys, it's a bit, bit, bit of uh, clear how, how the price, where the price went after retesting the order block. I will come to this also later on live chart. Now, T89. Again, people are asking me, what is T89? Well, I guess uh, still uh, there, are, there are always new people who come to our webinars and educational lessons, and uh, they simply don't know. They have never heard of uh, T89. and uh, it's it's uh, just uh, for me it's not a coincidence because uh, I've been the creator of T89 and T89 was actually created last year so uh, it's only like a year of, of uh, T89 like it's it's a very young candlestick pattern and uh, well you see Mihai now is saying that T89 is something amazing EMA 89 is the best for day trading uh, uh, so well you know um, uh, I noticed, uh, first of all, I'm a big fan of 89 simply because 88.6 is, uh, for me, it's the most, Im well, the most important uh, Fibonacci retracement. Now, if you look at uh, numerology, uh, 0.8 is a godly number. Also, uh, uh, you need to know that uh, deep retracement is 88.6 and uh, big banks also like to use that uh, big retracement. Uh, so when you round it up, uh, 88.6, uh, will, you will give, you will actually get T, you will get 89. So EMA 89. When, when we see a pin bar rejection off of 89 EMA, that is T89. Ideally, bearish T89 should look colored, like this is bearish candle, not bullish. You see, it would, it would ideally look like this bearish but very often uh, simply because uh, simply because just this pin bar uh, is telling you more than this body so s sellers are stronger than than buyers right here you see uh, in my definition uh, it's always uh, pin bar is always more important uh, the wick is more important than the body so here guys you see pin bar actually signifies sellers this body signifies uh, buyers uh, in this example, 
uh, this uh, wick is uh, stronger than body, right? So this is also good T89. You see clear example of bullish T89 here. Okay. Now this one is bearish T89. This one is bullish T89. So you will find a lot of examples of these pin bar rejections off of uh, 89 EMA, but you need also to watch whether the body is bearish or bullish and the pin bar. If you see that you have a pin bar like this, but the actually body, let's say that the body is huge and it's bullish, it's not T89. If you see this big wick and small bullish body, it's okay. This is bearish T89. If you see a big wick and big, 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 but bearish body, it doesn't matter. It's still good T89. Okay? So always compare wicks to the body and EMA 89. If this was bearish body, for example, this T89 would have still been, let's say, valid because buyers that are signified by this big wick are much stronger than sellers that are signified with, let's say, bearish body. See? That's the logic of candlestick reading. You cannot just read about candlesticks and, uh, well, the old school always says, uh, compare, uh, this is shooting star, compare the uh, uh, compare uh, resistance and uh, or support to the weak. Well, I don't think that is the fact because old school simply uh, uh, didn't, uh, they, they didn't trade during such a high volatility as it is today. Definitely, guys, today is much, much higher vol volatility than it has ever been right in the markets, especially because we also have a huge number of retail people who are trading. Some people trade it for living, some people trade it for hobby, but generally, guys, money does not stink. Everyone is attracted to money. Everyone is attracted to making pips from their very homes. So this is a great profession, a great, uh, even for part-time traders, Forex trading is simply, uh, for me, it's a must, guys. And yeah, I always say, bring your family, bring your friends, everyone to see how trading can be profitable and make them be happier in their lives. Uh, that is why I always try to present you the best as I can. This is my child, this is what I have created and I'm really proud of these 89 rejections because definitely, definitely they have the impact on technical analysis and on your trading as a trader. Next one is, uh, is so-called, uh, this is true momentum true momentum bar. Uh, true momentum bar is, well, it's, let's say, uh, a little bit different than inside bar. True momentum bar is signified by the candle that has, uh, let's say, it's, uh, it's opposite to master candle. Uh, it should have at least two candles trapped within the body. So we, within the whole candlestick body, so I mean I just don't refer to body as the body, but the whole range of candlestick, that is a better definition. So the candlestick that has at least two candlesticks trapped in its range to its left side can be a true momentum bar. So here, guys, you see, this is the candlestick, strong momentum, marubozu, and it has two candlesticks trapped within the body, within the range, sorry, within the range of the candle. Here we have four candlesticks trapped within the range. Here we have two candlesticks trapped within the range. Here two, here three. So how you trade this? This is very good, guys. For price action trading, this is great, guys. This is great. Watch this. When this candle is broken by two pips and spread, it is time to go long. Same here same here, same here. It's just vice versa for bearish candles. When you see a bearish candle here, let's say just for example that this is a bearish candle, okay, just for example, you would sell two pips below the true momentum bar. So it's, it's simply different, it's, it's not master candle. Master candle starts from the left. True momentum bars 
starts from the right. You see the logic? So the logic tells us that in, especially in trend trading, this can be very good because you don't need indicators guys to trade uh, through momentum bars. Simply this is the end of retracement. You see there was retracement, it has ended, retracement, it has ended, retracement, it has ended. So you just need to see whether the pair is close to important resistance in this example and to take a trade or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, the comment Mario is saying now, paraphrasing Iron Maiden T89, the name of the beast. Yes, Iron Maiden is one of my favorite bands, uh, originally from UK. Well, yes, definitely I'm a big fan of Iron Maiden and yes, the name of the beast T89. Indeed, well, 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 thank you, thank you, Mario, so I, I can agree with you. So, uh, here guys, you, you know, you just need to watch whether this is a resistance or not. So, if this is a big movement to the upside, obviously this was strong resistance, so you would think twice about entering along here, although these all longs have been profitable, you see, but here this is much better retracement, and when you see true momentum bar, you go along. Two pips above it. Watch this. Very strong. I think uh, the, the the profitability of uh, true momentum bar, if you know how to spot it, can be huge. No matter, now we are talking also from scalping perspective, not just from perspective of uh, finding good entries. Usually a break of true momentum bar will give you instant pips. But of course, as I say, you need to pay attention whether uh, there is a clo where there, there is a strong support or resistance there and if you see a strong support resistance you of course guys don't trade it I mean you don't go long on resistance right what is a stop grabber stop grabber is a fake out fake out candle that collects all stops that have been placed in a certain level and uh, simply when it gets momentum it goes higher and higher or lower and lower depending of the trend of the of the move so stop grabber is the candle that has eaten all stops above the resistance, but after that, usually the move is faded. The move returns to the original direction. This is stop grabber. This is stop grabber. And today on Euro Dollar, we also had a stop grabber, guys. Uh, this is a dangerous candlestick pattern uh, because traders who want to trade it usually they don't pay attention much to resistance to support and can be trapped in a very bad trade longing into resistance or shorting into support because of that it can be very 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 guys dangerous to trade it simply put when you see a stop grabber uh, you would usually see it later because it already it has already happened for example here uh, the market was going sideways okay and suddenly it started to go up Okay, and you think the market will proceed to the upside, but what you don't know and what you don't see that this is indeed a strong resistance here, and usually stops for shorting trades, for short trades, because banks will start to short from this point, and institutional traders, they won't be selling here, they won't be selling at resistance, okay, and what happened? Look what happened. Price went with a strong momentum candle, collect all, it collected all stops here, but it didn't, no, it's not like uh, order block, because it didn't reject. Order block rejects the price, guys. And this is not a good swing. This is order block. This is, in, in one sense, order block, but watch here. This is a fake out candle, because price didn't reject from order block. Actually, this is dangerous. It collected all stops there and proceed in its original direction. It usually happens when it's too late. And usually traders who trade, uh, who go along here, if they don't take profit here, they are trapped into stop grabber and bang. You, you lose the trade. I mean, there is no point in any revenge because usually the price will go completely to the opposite side. These candles are simply because if, if uh, someone put a strong order here, 
Well, it will collect all stops to the upside because, guys, every close of buy position is automatic sell into the market. Every close of sell position, it is automatic buy into the market. That is what your pl platform does in, in, in background. So if those weak stops are collected here, it will create a stop grabber, collect stops, and then return back to, to uh, its original direction. Now well, let's see uh, how it looks on a live chart. Uh, I will show you now. First, we will start with order blocks. OK, here. This is, let's say, we will use, OK, no, we will use actually stop grabber here. Euro dollar, because Euro dollar had a stop grabber today. You know, guys, that now you see V-shaped reversal, V-shaped reversal. When you see these kind of reversals, V-shape here, no, I'm sure this is institutions, guys. This is institutional buying. So, obviously, this was a fake out here. This is resistance, very strong one. Watch this. This looks exactly as this. So, these patterns are repeating in Forex market. Watch this. Compared to today's price action. Very similar, right? Stop grabber, guys. People who actually thought that euro dollar might have gone to the upside from this spot, they probably lost their trades because stop grabber just collected all stops toward 0830 and then what happened? <laughs> it just went downside. I'm not saying this, this might look like inverted head and shoulders here if it gets here. But guys, if it proceeds lower tomorrow with NFP, it will be very interesting to see uh, what will happen on NFP, but on good NFP uh, or, or average earnings or unemployment data, I really think that euro dollar will go down. So these are just stop grabbers. They collected all stops here, and now you see there is retracement. Uh, very, very nasty pattern, especially if you are caught into some long trades here. Usually that means that you will lose a trade and, uh, <laughs> well, you, you, you need to accept it. We, we simply cannot know what a stop grabber is until it, it actually appears, right? For obvious reasons. It is post-fact candle. We cannot use it pre-fact because it happens in now moment. Uh, for me now, what I would like to, to add is definitely this is a strong resistance that can be tested only during the major market open. So I don't really think that it will be tested, uh, let's say, until Tokyo. I'm not sure. Only if uh, only that could happen if some, well, say, when well, I say news, uh, pu pu push the price to the upside during uh, during a New York session, but only during major market open, it can be tested again. Should this level broke, I think uh, that would be bearish for euro definitely. So uh, stop grabber simply it can happen before some news that are expected like uh, NFP, it's expected tomorrow. So this is not just coincidence, I mean there is no there is no momentum to push the price more to the upside, this is strong resistance. And you see the price is retracing, why? Because stop grabber collected all stops and all these stops that were collected, well, now people are exiting their long trades. <clears throat> now there are no long longs anymore here at this level and price starts to go down. That happens on profit taking. Look at the time, it's uh, 6.55, it's actually 5.55 GMT, right? It's a profit taking now. So now we actually see the true profit taking. Price is going down. Uh, what I would like to add is that you need to be aware of support and resistance. And really, guys, if you see that <clears throat> this is happening, you can actually try to maybe trade it at the break of some of these weeks. You can try to go short and scalp something because you will be riding a profit-taking wave. This is profit-taking wave. 
happening at, at this time. So, stop grabber. Now, uh, a T89. Guys, T89. This is T89. This one. Look how the wick is much higher, much bigger than the body. Although the candle was bullish, this tells me this is, this is actually bearish. This is T89 here. I will mark it before it. So this is T89, this is T89. Th these are T89s, guys, here. Watch this. T89, T89. Watch this. T89, perfect. You see the power of T89. T89. T89 here. T89 here. T89 here. Mm, discussable bodies uh, higher than the wick, so this is bullish. This is not T89. T89. Bullish T89, although the body is bearish. Look at the wick. Strong wick before, also strong wick. T89. You will find a lot of, a lot of examples with T89s. So pay attention to it, guys. And finally, order block. Uh, yes, I will also sh show you true momentum if, uh, after this. Uh, order block. Let's use pound dollar. No, there was news for pound dollar. We cannot use it. Yeah, this is uh, much better. Dollar cat. Guys, simply, the, I, can, I can identify order block by, by my naked eye. I, I just take a look at the chart and I see the order block. This is order block. This one here. This is order block here. Watch the confluence. This is short from this. If uh, dollar cad gets to 3080 zone, this is naked short. I mean, the, no brainer short. At least if there are no news that can push the pair up or down, if it s slowly grinds to this zone, I think it, when it enters the zone, it will be an instant sell here. Okay, bullish, no, this was not, but not, not an order block, actually. Let's see. Okay, price starts to go down. Bearish order block. Uh, we can say that this could be an order block, double bottom also. Now, price is going down. This is now moment. Oh, obvious order block. Watch this. Watch this, guys. You see, price went here, tried to go down, tried to reject. There was some movement to the upside, and then it finally rejected. Because, yeah, this was order block also here. Watch this, order block here. So price actually wanted to test this one. It tried to go up. You see, it didn't have momentum. Then it retested this order block and went down. Usually, I don't go much to the left to find order blocks. Simply, it's enough to me to watch it now moment and just we need to actually uh, more bars. Okay, guys, let's see. So try to find from the to try to find the to go naked. Okay, let's try to find. Let's see if you can find it. I'm searching for it. It's not uh, easy to find, but let's find
Sorry, folks. I think uh, Nenad lost his internet connection, perhaps, or there's something indeed going on. I don't hear Nenad either. So the sound seems to be back with with me. Uh, at least a, at least one person is confirming that. Bernard is confirming that. So let's see if Nenad uh, can get his mic back or his internet. I'm not sure. One of the two, for just a second. I think that then I was about to wrap up uh, in any case. Trying to reach him on the chat as well. Well, folks, uh, you know, we have more webinars, of course, next week. Roughly the same schedule, but just uh, a few other topics, of course. So looking forward to, to see you there as well. This week was a lot of news events. So um, I hope that next week we can have a bit more technical trading again. Thank you, Bernard. Great to hear that. I, uh, I hope that uh, indeed everything was useful. Some of you would like probably more the T89. Others would like uh, maybe the order block more. Maybe some of you even the fractals. I know that uh, you know it maybe seems a bit confusing uh, when you look at it the first time. But... Uh, Give it a try if you like, and these, the indicator is, is for free, so no harm done there. I uh, I don't hear that, so I think let's, let's call it a day then for Thursday. Thanks so much for being here, folks. It was really uh, appreciated a lot, and uh, we, of course, wish you great trading, and we're looking forward to see you next week. Cheers, everyone.